Hello. Is it time for sausages? Do I need to take a step back? Okay, just a little too close. Are you washing your sausage before you eat it? Yeah, having a little drink. Hello and welcome to Jennifer Natters. I am Jennifer and this is my knitting and nattering podcast where I blether on about whatever I have been up to in the last span of time, mostly craft related, um, mostly knitting related. If you are a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back. I am always happy to sit down with friends and have a blether and my life's a bit remote right now, so doing this through my podcast is how I feel like I have friends, how I get to interact with people, and it really makes a huge impact on my life. It means a lot to me that you are watching. If you are a new viewer, thank you so much for giving me a chance. I hope you like what you see. If you don't, I hope you find something else you like more. And yeah, either way, I hope you have a comforting beverage. This was full when I sat down and started this. I'm already on like my fourth take. And something crafty or other hobby related to work on. We just catch up. Yeah, blah. Returning viewers may notice that my setup has changed slightly. I bought myself a tripod and I got a microphone. Not sure how the microphone's working. I did a couple sound checks and hopefully this is better. Um, we will see. There's also a little light, but I couldn't figure out how to get the light and the microphone the microphone's supposed to go on top of the light. I think that piece is not working properly. I couldn't get them together. But yeah, it's a glorious sunny day sometimes. Sometimes a little bit overcast. So hopefully we'll be able to see all right and the light won't be doing all sorts of weird things that are too terribly distracting. The light will absolutely be doing all sorts of weird things. Hopefully it won't be too distracting. <laughs> that part is true. I did not record, I'm trying to think if it's been two or three weeks. I feel like it's been two weeks, like two weeks have gone by since last I recorded. I haven't really had a lot to show because I've been doing some fairly monogamous knitting. Uh, last time I mentioned that I had started the Blueprint Pullover. And this is by Paper Lantern. Let me just check my pattern. Paper Moon Knits, and that's Joan. It, my printer is not a great quality and the ink has already started to wear off the person's last name. So I'm not going to try it because I don't even know that I have the correct letters. Paper Moon Knits, this is the Blueprint Pullover. And last time, I believe I was still joining the front. And now I'm almost done with the body. I have put it on a big needle and tried it on and it fits pretty well. Um, it's gonna be slightly oversized, I think, and it's boxy. It's just straight down from the shoulders. It's got this lovely deep V of textured lace and then it will have sleeves of indeterminate length because I haven't determined it yet. The yarn I am using is Carol Fella's Carol Feller's Nua, which is a linen merino yak blend. And it's the linen that's just not 
taking the color the same as the other fibers. This is a rich bluey purple, very much an indigo. I did make one mistake in this so far, which is that when, so you start with one shoulder and it, then the other shoulder and you join them. And then you're supposed to pick up the stitches for the front shoulders, worked the same way from your back stitches. I didn't do that. I just cast on new stitches and knit. And then after I joined in the round, I went back and just mattress stitched that together. So I do have a slight line. I wasn't, oh, hello, have you jumped down? Yeah. Now I can hear the neighbor bringing in their bin. I think it's the neighbor. It might even be my husband bringing in the bin. And Libby saying hi. Okay, you can come up, come on. Yes, yes. Lots of noisy bins. Uh, when I was doing the mattress stitch, I was not working too terribly hard on keeping the tension to match. If you get the tension right, the stitches disappear. I'm okay with having a bit of a seam because I know I don't want this to stretch out and grow a lot. Hello? Hello? The other way of picking up the stitches, I've done it before, it does give you a strong seam at the shoulder. It can just be a bit more invisible because you don't have to match your tension because the knit stitches should theoretically all be the same tension. Anyway, she's now doing puddings on the pullover I am working on. Libby, you are a very silly kitten. Did I mention I got my hair cut? I don't think I did. I went to the hairdressers today, first time since 2019. I normally get my hair cut two or possibly three times in a year if my hair is not behaving well three times. Um, and I feel like I got it cut in October or November of 2019. And today, the end of May, 2022, it has been three years since I got my hair cut professionally. Almost three years. Definitely over two and a half years. But yeah, haircut. And he straightened it. I'm like, oh, I'm not used to having my hair straight. And he goes, oh, well, I didn't, you know, I could straighten it for you if you like. And I'm like, what, what are you talking about? This is straight. But I guess for hairdressers, this is still a bit wavy. For me, this is straight. Libby, what are you? I've lost. I just have a tail and some back legs. This interlude brought to you by Libby being weird. Anyway, most of what I've been working on has been my pullover. I'd really like to get this done. I have a lot of sweater quantities in my stash. <laughs> is looking for the word it's a closet or a wardrobe is where it's all kept but I have a lot of sweater quantities in my stash and I am just what are you doing Libby's being weird I would like to have sweaters instead of sweater quantities uh yeah so this one possibly might even be done by the next time depending on how long that is and how much I actually work on it and then when I was thinking about recording this last week, I was like, do I really only have the one thing I've worked on? So I cast on a new project in the hope that I would have it to show. I just have to get it out from under the cat. Last time I showed you some yarn from Rusty Ferret, which I was hoping to turn into a beloved bonnet. I caked up the yarn and I cast on the bonnet. This one I was going to say it's for me. It's either for me or for a gift. And, but it is adult size. So in as much as it's adult size for me, I have made it this far and I just have to do, I mean, each row is getting smaller and it will be done. This is on Rusty Ferret's Bamboo DK Base. Let me just grab the tag and pull my hair out of my mouth. It is 80% superwash merino, 20% bamboo. And this is the colorway Atypical, which is a creamy 
base with lots of little color flashes and I love it that the creamy isn't really my best color but it is intended to be worn as a hat under a bicycle helmet so it's a very close fitting I mean that's not what the pattern is for my intention in making it is that it would be a hat to be worn under a bicycle helmet and you can tie it under the chin to keep it really warm on your ears. I knit one for my five-year-old and for my friend's four-year-old. So they each have a little bicycle. Well, I didn't knit it. I knit it for my five-year-old so that she would have it when she went into the woods and it could tie on and she wouldn't get it lost when she went nursery in the woods. And then I said, I bet this would work really well under a bicycle helmet. So I knit one for my friend who does a lot of bicycling with her ch my friend's child. They do a lot of bicycling together um, as a really close fitting hat that would keep you warm under a bicycle helmet. And now I'm starting to think grown up versions would be nice too. So this is just a fun hat. Uh, the pattern's really fun to knit. It's done with a lot of short rows, I-cord. It's tin can knit, so it goes from really, really small to really, really big. The instructions are great, and there's a lot of online tutorials. So, and then I've got the stitch markers that LJ included with the yarn, if not this yarn, then other yarn that I ordered. And there's a black heart. And the blue heart. Yeah, so didn't quite get this finished in time for the podcast, but I didn't want to wait and finish it and then podcast because I've got the cute hair today. And frankly, it has been a long time since anyone else has done anything cute with my hair. Um, I will not be straightening it in the future. When I lived in California, I used to straighten my hair on a reasonably regular basis. Uh, and the way it worked, because my hair's really thick so it doesn't dry, so I'd wash it one day and then I'd straighten it the second day and then I'd have mostly still straightened hair the third day and then wash my hair again, um, you know, it would be a three-day wash cycle. And then I moved to Scotland and I washed my hair one day and then the next day I straightened it and then it rained and my hair just went all curly again. So the amount of effort it took to straighten my hair no longer was worth it. So I haven't had straight-ish hair for a long time. I did think about straightening it sometimes when we were home for lockdown because I wasn't going to go out and get rained on. And lest you think like, well, what about a day like today where it is so sunny? When I was going to the hairdressers, it rained on me. And our forecast for today is passing showers. I, I don't know how people in Scotland straighten their hair because my hair, the second it gets a bit of moisture in it, it just goes back to being whatever it wants to be and not whatever I told it to be, which is why I generally try to tell it to just be what it wants to be. How much can I talk about my hair? Probably a lot because this was a big thing for me. I mean, it's been three years since I got it cut. I was doing my own hair cutting, which was fine at first. I was kind of, I wanted it to be short, like chin length short. So I started with just a little bit off and it looked good. And then I took a little bit more off and it looked good. And then I took, and I gave myself a mullet and that was deeply traumatic. I had to cut it all really short. And then I've basically just been growing it out since then. It took ages. And then my hair did this weird thing where it kind of, like every month it looked like it was out of a different decade. I don't know why, it just did. Um, and then I was just kind of trimming it to like try to keep my fringe. Fringe, I'm in the UK, this is fringe. Although the hairdresser said that this particular style of fringe is apparently being referred to as having bangs. So who knows? My nose just itches a little and now the sun's behind clouds again. Because we're basically out of knitting content, so I'm already moved on fully into just having a blether. <laughs> um, but yeah, I never, I never straighten my hair anymore because it's not worth it. It doesn't last. 
I do have some acquisitions to show you. They're not recent acquisitions. They're older acquisitions. And I just, because I didn't podcast for a month, a bunch of stuff built in. And then I didn't show you last time because I had so much knitting to catch you up on. And this time I barely have any knitting. So I was like, let me pull out the things I've gotten as acquisitions. And then I couldn't even find all of it. But what I could find, because I showed you, I showed you the rusty ferret last time so I'd be able to cast on the hat. The other thing I was able to find is Laura the Lonely Knitter, formerly Bumbling Yarns and Crafter's Balm. She's now decided, just so that people don't have to do that explanation, to make it all under one umbrella, the Lonely Knitter yarn and Crafter's Bomb, I guess, is still its own thing. Those are scrappy packs from earlier this year. One of them is, ooh, one is Downton Abbey, and the other one is Stargate SG-1. So, let's see. Downton Abbey colors. Stargate SG-1 colors. And then I've ordered another one, but now I can't remember what show it is. Um, Laura has been doing a nerdy television show, just television show really, related scrappy or mini packs for the last, last year and this year. She said it's the last year. I presume she'll just have a different inspiration going forward. Uh, I like minis. Minis don't count as stash. I do need to start a new scrappy mini project because I really like working on those and I have lots of beautiful colors. Which is what my other acquisition is. I got my Henny Penny Makes. I'm doing two of her scrappy clubs which is this year's Color Therapy Club. I did the Color Therapy Club last year and it's the same colors but they're different dyes. Um, so it's, you know, the same pink, red, orange, green, blue, teal, all the colors that it was last year, but she's dyeing up new yarns for them. And then she's doing a chakra club, which is still themed on the same thing, like pink, red, orange, the colors, but they're variegated colors rather than just tonals and speckles and stuff in one color family. I got my, I got six packs because I'm doing it quarterly and then they ship quarterly, so instead of getting two packs a month, I get six packs a quarter. Where did I put them? I don't know, because our house is a bit of a tip, more so than usual. I mean, my craft stuff is always just a lot, because I have a lot of craft stuff, which is why I'm trying not to buy things, except scrappy packs, because scraps don't count. And I'm trying to work through my sweater quantities, because as I mentioned, I have a lot of them and sweater quantities. I, I just want sweaters. They're so nice. I'm wearing one. This is my love note. Again, Tin Can Knits in Old Baden Ant and Rowan. What is Rowan's fluffy yarn called? I don't know. Um... See? Absolutely not prepared for this. I'm also wearing a shirt I made underneath it. A cashmere at Montrose in random fabric because I don't know what fabric I buy. I buy it and even then I don't know what it is. And then it sits in my stash for a while and then I sew it up and I still have no idea what it is. Um, <laughs> but it is a Montrose top. It's actually a little big on me. I need to redo my measurements for all of my cashmere stuff because while I haven't particularly been losing weight my body shape has changed from the running and the bicycling and the swimming that I've been doing that's what I've been doing my house is a tip because of house stuff and I've been really busy with lots of exercise stuff who even am I I am supposed to be a couch potato who sits here and watches podcasts where people talk about their knitting and I knit and that's what I do and then you know feed my children and do laundry and clean up having fed my children 
and do more laundry and garden if I'm lucky. Uh, yeah, haven't been doing very much of, of that kind of stuff. But my body shape has finally changed and it has changed back to what I think of as my default, which is a slight hour, you know, like a, I'm fat, I've always been fat. I've never not been fat, but fat with a defined waist. Whereas like post second baby pandemic body was definitely just a lot more round. And I was, I didn't really talk about it because when you're a fat person and you're not a fat person on a diet, you're not really allowed. To... I try to be fat positive and body positive and saying, I don't like my body. It's too fat does not fit in with any of that, but it wasn't the weight. It wasn't the number on the scale or even the size of the clothes. It was that my body looked wrong, which I kind of is another realization I came to recently. It was the body dysmorphia because when I looked in the mirror, my body didn't look the shape it was supposed to. It's less about the size and more about the proportions. And so the kind of clothes that I'm used to being able to buy and look good in weren't looking good. Um, like even if you got them in the correct size, the styles were wrong. And that was really hard. I mean, that was really... And I was also thinking that's probably a lot of skinny people if they go through, you know, divorce, having a baby, moving house, death of a loved one, any of those traumatic experiences, um, ill health themselves that can cause someone's body shape to change when to put on more weight than usual or lose a lot of weight. But most people it's putting on weight. When you look in the mirror, you don't recognize yourself. You don't feel like who you are. That to them, that's what feeling like being fat is that feeling, which is to body dysmorphia rather than existing in a fat body that you've always kind of lived in. So I think that is part of, can you tell I, I spend way too much time thinking about people feeling fat versus being fat. I'm gonna use the word fat a lot. Um, anyway, my weight hasn't changed significantly, but my body shape with all the exercise has finally gone back to being the shape I expect to see when I look in the mirror at myself. And I've had a huge boost in, um, it's not even my self-confidence. Um, Anyway, I've had a huge boost in not thinking I look bad and feeling like I look good. Like I'm happy with my body. The sun is now doing weird, changing the sun things. Anyway, that is to say my body shape has changed and now I can revisit my wardrobe and go back to things that look the way I want to look in clothes. So that's, that's a good thing. And... I do, I mean, mostly what I'd made, I can't really do me made, me made May, because while I have knit things and lots of knit socks and a handful of shirts and a smaller handful of dresses, I don't have bottoms. I don't have any skirts. I don't have any trousers, but now I can kind of fill in. And the dresses I have are really for much warmer weather than we get in May. Excuse me, little hiccup there. So yeah, I need to revisit what size I'm making and make myself some new stuff that fits properly. Although I have been able to pull some things out of my cupboard that I haven't worn in a while because they looked bad. They didn't fit the way I want. I mean, it's not just a size thing. I had gained a little weight in lockdown. I had lost a little weight in lockdown, but it was still the body shape was really the main problem and they weren't like they were to fit a shape of body that I did not have. So yeah, my body shape has largely shifted. I mean, not completely, but it's at least more in that direction where I'm looking in the mirror and I'm like, I look like me again. But it's had a huge boost in my, 
it's not confidence. It's like, it has nothing to do with how I think other people feel about me. <sighs> I don't know what the word is, but I have been feeling better about myself. So yeah, um, specifically talking about, I'm just all over the place, <laughs> but specifically talking about the running, I am finally on week nine of the Couch to 5K, which is a nine week thing. I started back in August when my kids went back to school. I dropped the younger one off at nursery and then I went to the park and I ran. It starts with one minute of running and 90 minutes of walking alternating. Um, and then you build up to the week I'm on, which is 30 minutes of running. And it's a five minute walk for warm up and cool down on either side of it. So I just realized my watch is a bit tight and I am adjusting it. My watch is driving me bonkers because I can usually start it for things and I cannot stop it. So I can start it for like if I want it to track a run, but I can't stop it. I can put it in water lock mode, but I can't get it out of water lock mode. So I think my watch is, is not working for me for the things I want it to do anymore. It did when I didn't exercise, when I just, you know, wanted my basic tracking how many steps I did. So if I go to the doctor and they're like, oh, you need to stop being a couch potato and, you know, eat less and blah, 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 and we won't take care of your broken foot because you're fat. That's a slight exaggeration, but not a, not a huge one. Um, that I can be, you know, I do 10,000 to 20,000 steps a day. I'm not running marathons, but I'm, I'm walking everywhere. I don't have a car. Anyway, now I want to actually tra track specific physical things, times of exertion. And my watch is significantly less good at that. But it's old and it wasn't the latest model when I got it. So we will see if I can find something, if I decide I do. It's, it's still perfectly good. So it's hard for me to be like, oh, I'm going to spend a lot of money on replacing it. But it's also not doing what I want it to do. So in that respect, it is not perfectly good. Why? Why do I have a cattail? But yes, so I started the Couch to 5K back in August and it was going well. I couldn't run every week because like if the kids were home, then I didn't go running or, you know, whether that was because it was a school break or someone was poorly or they couldn't go because someone else had COVID or eventually it wound up being them having COVID. And then the end of October, beginning of November, I got a chest infection, which lasted for two months because I have asthma and everything lasts too long when you have asthma. And then it was too cold to run because again, I have asthma and cold is a trigger. So I couldn't run when there was snow on the ground. And so it was kind of the end of January when I was able to get back out there three months later. So from January, again, give or take when my kids have been home because their class has been closed or because they had COVID or because there was no school regularly scheduled, I have finally made it to all nine weeks of the Couch to 5K. And I'm really happy about that. And if I'd had a goal of completing it by my birthday, which I didn't because I started back in August, I made it because my birthday's this weekend. And I, I mean, my third run will be next week technically, but I've made it. I've made it up to 30 minutes. And yeah, I'm feeling really good about it. I'm not the fastest. And I don't think I'm technically doing a 5K. If you count the, the warm up and the cool down, I'm doing a 5K, but that's not the half hour of running. But yeah, I am strong and there's bins again outside. And I'm really happy. Like the running really makes me happy. It also makes me completely exhausted, but it makes me happy. And then on my rest days, I usually wind up doing a bike ride of some sort, which is just a getting around thing, not a 
like I will go ride my bike for the pleasure of riding the bike. It is, I will ride my bike to go somewhere and do something, which on Thursdays has been taking my youngest child to swimming lessons. And because they're back to pre-COVID protocols where the swim teacher is in the pool with the kids and the parents aren't, and I don't have another baby there with me to keep an eye on while one child swims, it's just me and the youngest, I can actually go swimming while she's having her lesson. And um, this last week was the only time I've actually been able to do that so far. I've done like swimming around, one of my friends also has a child in the class, like we've done swimming together, but they weren't able to go last week. So I properly got in a proper lane and properly did laps it was so hard. <laughs> it was so hard. Like I've been going with my kids. We did the swimming lessons over Easter break. They went for a week. And then I was going back and forth with whichever one wasn't in the swimming lesson while the other one was in it. So I was doing like head up breaststroke slowly from one side of the pool to the other and um, a little bit faster with my friend whose kid is in the class as well. But I actually properly went to do laps and every time I completed a 50, which is there and back, I was just gasping and so tired and sore. And I think I cracked the cartilage in my sternum because uh, that is the only thing that makes sense based on the pain I am experiencing. It was so hard. I used to swim competitively when I was young. Um, I stopped in high school when I developed walking pneumonia, which then is now why I have asthma. But I, I mean, like I even, I used to swim just sometimes and it, ugh, I got home and I'm like, that was really, really, really hard. And of course my husband says, well, when's the last time you swam laps? And I don't remember if it was before I got pregnant with a nine-year-old, nine, almost nine and a half-year-old, or if I feel like I was able to do it at least once or twice when I was pregnant with her, <sighs> which means it's been at least 10 years, but I feel like it had been 10 years before that, like when I had regular access to a swimming pool, to what I, like when I moved here to Scotland, signed up at the leisure center so I could go swim laps. So I was doing it for two years before I got pregnant, two and a half years. Before that, I feel like it was 10 years before I had regular access to a swimming pool. And it was not like, oh my God, I think I'm gonna die. I can't do this. <laughs> like it was this last Thursday, which admittedly I wasn't 40 and had had two babies in the previous 10 years. But yeah, it was so hard. If I'm gonna swim, I really, 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 need to work on building up that fitness. Because it turns out that walking everywhere all the time and being able to run and bicycling does not build up the specific skills you need for being able to swim. So hopefully I can improve that fitness level. There are things happening at my neighbor's house over there. Um, so yeah, that was, that was really hard. It was good hard, but it was really hard. Uh, let's see, house stuff. My house is a complete and utter tip right now because we have decided, I mentioned last time we were going, like we were working on reorganizing the house. My husband wanted a music bit set up in his room and then so the cats, the cats, I have a cat on my lap. If he is in the house, both cats want to be with him and he does not feel he can compose his music in public areas. Even if he can convince the children to leave him alone, he cannot convince the cats to just let him be. Uh, so yeah, we cleaned out the that front bedroom of all the stuff that is not Chris's stuff so that it can be a space where he feels comfortable being in the room and not like he's just in someone's spare bedroom borrowing a few cubic feet of space 
and I mean we started with emptying the garage but that was before so we got his room emptied out and things put into the previously emptied out garage which is a lot less emptied out through this process and then we got the sofa bed out of what has previously been referred to as the sofa bedroom which was a lot easier than I thought it was. I remember getting it into the room had been like this ordeal that was really tricky. And I guess it must just be like the direction the bed was traveling, like the way it was orient oriented, orientated. I feel like orientated is how British people would say it. And that sounds wrong to me because it's the wrong way to say it. But now I can't remember how as an American I would say it. The way the sofa, was being moved through the door made it tricky in a way it hadn't needed to be. My cat is no longer in my lap, so I can pull out my my busy doing other things knitting, which I have not particularly worked on since last I spoke to you, so I had didn't mention it in the knitting portion. Knitting portion. Anyway, getting it out of the room was not a problem at all. I took the mattress off and I thought I was going to have to detach the bed the like the foldy out metal bed bit but it turned out it wasn't very heavy at all I did look at the mattress and say we should probably replace that because that is the original mattress that came with the sofa bed and it has been a while it doesn't get used a whole heck of a lot but the mattress has probably reached the end of its usefulness and yeah we got that out in the lounge and then the kids who are switching bedrooms started switching their bedrooms, which was not a thing I particularly had wanted them to do at that moment because I didn't feel, anyway, I wanted it moved in a very organized way and I was not up to doing it in the organized way at that time. And instead the kids just chose chaos. Um, but having gotten most of the five-year-old stuff out of the sofa bedroom, she does not sleep in the sofa bedroom. She sleeps in my room, which is why we hadn't particularly been worried about having a bed for her. And we got her stuff out of there. Not me. The two kids working together got most of her stuff out. And so we moved some of the other stuff out. And then I built the new bed frame and got the headboard put together and put those in there. I'll put pictures of this stuff I was gonna say at the end, but there's no reason I can't do it right now. I will put it wherever feels best when I am editing this video. So I built the bed and the headboard. The headboard is the type that gets mounted on the wall, which I have chosen not to do at this time until we figure out the final arrangement, how we want the room set up, because I'm not gonna, you know, find studs and screw it into the wall and then have my nine-year-old be like, hey, actually, I want the bed over there instead. So yeah, we'll get all the stuff kind of in the room and give her a while and see if we want things moved around. So I did that. And then that was two days because I got the bed half put together and realized I'd put the sides on upside down. Or, you know, the left side was on the right side and the right side was on the left side because there were holes for the screws that were supposed to be at the bottom and they were at the top. So I had to take a bit of the bed apart. So I said, you know what? I'm just gonna wait. It's almost bedtime. I will set this aside and deal with it in the morning. So I finished it the next day and got the headboard put together and the bed on it and clean sheets on it. And then my kids came home and there was more chaos of moving the older one out of her bedroom and. So the five-year-old stuff is all in the lounge, which now has the three sofas in it. Um, it is not a huge lounge, but you know, if all you're gonna do is sit around and talk to people, then three sofas, is, it's a comfortable, cozy space. Except now it's also got all of the five-year-old's clothes, which are in tubs, because part of the problem was her dresser she has already gone through two dressers with the drawers all broken and stuff because we've had a great deal of trouble convincing her not to climb things. Hopefully she is past that phase now. Um, 
we no longer have dressers with the kind of handles that look enticingly like a ladder. That is certainly a thing we've had to change about our lives. Uh, yeah, so the dresser is completely broken. And so most of her clothes are just in clear plastic tubs. The clear plastic tubs are now stacked in the lounge. There are a few things still in the broken dresser, which is in the hallway. She put together one tub of things she doesn't want anymore and an overflowing big carrier bag of things she does want. And then there's random other stuff that's, I mean, it just, there's so much stuff in the public places where people want to walk or be right now that they're basically unusable. And then we're getting the nine-year-old slightly, the nine-year-old at least got a lot of her laundry moved into, oh, cause then yesterday was Tuesday. I built the dresser and I got the frame of it done in the morning. And then I took I, the five-year-old did a half day. I previously referred to her as rainbow, which is fine. Um, Rainbow did a half day and then I loaded her in the the trailer, the bike trailer that I'm borrowing and we went down to Dun Elm, which is kind of an interior house thing, things for the home, bedding and anyway, we went there for bedding so that we could get new sheets for her because she didn't want she didn't want to take over Pusheen, we'll call her Pusheen's old bed set. She wanted to be the one who bought the new bed. And I was like, but you want to play. And the semi loft gives you lots of room to play. And you have lots of stuff that we can put in the cupboard and much more into clothes, need lots of clothes space. And anyway, we said it was a good idea. And then she's in the bedroom that's directly across from me. So if she wakes up in the middle of the night crying, which she does, she's closer to me and stuff like that. So I convinced her with the promise of basically new bed set, um, not the furniture, but you know, all the soft furnishings for a room, which when the older one found out, she was like, wait, why don't I get all those new things? I'm like, cause you already have a lot of them and you got the new furniture sets. So uh, we did a half day and we biked over to Dunelm and bought new bedding and decals for the walls and some little throw pillows. It is now raining, see? I told you I couldn't go out on a lovely sunny Scottish day. I hope the microphone isn't picking it up too much. Anyway, we bought some new sheets, which I'm then doing lots of laundry in addition to the regular clothing of the week because I need to wash all the, the bedding. And while I was, then when we got home again, I built the drawers for the dresser, chest of drawers here in the UK. And while I was building them, Pusheen was bringing her stuff over from her old room and finally picking up all the laundry she had been refusing to put away up off the floor and fold it and put it in the dress like I'd put a drawer together and then she would be finding those cloth items clothing items and bringing them over and filling them up the dresser we got for her is pretty much the exact same height she is there's like half an inch she's maybe half an inch taller than the dresser she goes, why did you buy a dresser that was taller than me? And I said, I don't know. I guess we didn't realize how tall it would be. Well, why didn't you do the math? Because it's listed in centimeters and I think in feet and inches. And I'm like, we did. We just didn't, you know, really do it particularly closely. And then I remembered, she's the one who picked that dresser. I wanted the slightly shorter one. That she thought that would be the best which given she doesn't have a built-in cupboard a closet in that room it is for the best uh, that a lot of her clothes can fit in the dresser because if we do get her like a wardrobe it's not gonna be very big 
anyway, things still to do. Finish moving all of the picture books off the bookshelves that are in there because we've got two of the, are they the Billy bookcases? The big Ikea, standard Ikea white bookcases. Um, not the nice square cupboard ones, but the bookcases. And Pusheen says she doesn't want them. But Chris and I are both like, no, you definitely need, like the bookcases are going to stay in here and they will be increasingly useful as you get older. Um, though, you know, after a couple of months, it's not working out. We will always be able to find a place to put bookcases in the house. So I need to clear off rainbow stuff from the bottom ones. It's my stuff towards the top, which I'm not going to be able to clear out anytime soon because I need to make room in my room or in the garage for moving things around and prioritizing what goes where. But there's a roll top desk in there that was Chris's mother's when she was a young woman that I will get my random things out of it's currently where I store things like our important documents, but I can move those to my cupboard or something. Um, so yeah, clear that out for her and that can be her new desk. And yeah, make it look homey and then she'll be done, but I will still have to finish moving the five-year-old out of the lounge and into the other bedroom. So yeah, right now, house is a bit of a mess, lots of work to do. The first thing Rainbow said to me this morning was, was I going to make her bed? And I'm like, I'm going to go toilet and then I'm going to find pajamas for you because she refused to put pajamas on last night. Um, so. She needed warmer things to have when she got up in the morning. The house is, I had to open, I've been opening the windows. I don't know, it's felt really humid in the middle of the night. So I've been sleeping with the window wide open and then it's cold in the morning, which is better than being all hot and stuffy. Uh, but she'd gone to bed insufficiently dressed for the chill of the morning. So I put, I had to get her warmer pajamas or I guess I just went straight for clothes for the day. Um, and make tea and she was like now are you gonna do it like, kid am I dressed for the day no I am not I'm gonna get dressed gonna get you two off to school I'm gonna go for my run I didn't tell her I was getting my hair cut because she'd want to come and I'm like you do not want to come while I get my hair cut uh, but she would think she wanted to so yeah that's that's kind of a lot of what we have been up to and why I haven't, I mean, I didn't knit a single stitch yesterday because I did the school run in the morning and then I had breakfast and built half a dresser and had a date with Rainbow and then I built another, <laughs> the other half of the dresser and yeah, it was, that, that got me up to bedtime and the, Worst thing is I got my period yesterday, so I'm building the dresser and my back sore from all the getting down and getting up and putting this bit together and having to be in a weird position to put the screws in over there. And then also I had cramps on top of it. That was like last night bedtime was really sore. But fortunately I woke up this morning feeling much better. Like I thought I would bear, the way I felt when I went to bed, I thought I would not be able to move when I got up today. Uh, but I got up and I, I felt just fine, really. Uh, my back wasn't, touch wood, my back wasn't sore at all for all the work I did. So yeah, that's what I've been up to instead of doing fun, crafty things. And I think I have, the tea has just about gone through me. I don't really have much else to talk about. I did buy plants for the garden but there's not so much to say until I get them properly in the ground. The tulip bulbs that I didn't plant until February or March, and I just put them in one of the raised vegetable beds, those are all looking gorgeous, or if not all, at least enough of them that the bed looks full of tulips. So even if you are a late blooming gardener like me, 
<laughs> you can still have a lovely garden and either things will come up or they won't, which is how I felt about the tulips, but sometimes they just need a second year. But I need to decide if I'm going to dig them up and store them in a cool, dry place, which is what you're supposed to do. Or just leave them there and either they'll make it or they won't, which is more my kind of gardening. Um, but yeah, so hopefully I'll have some good garden news. That was another thing. I did one weekend where I did some gardening. I did like, I don't know, 45 minutes of light weed pulling and then my wrists were just done and I was so sore and I could barely do anything for a while. That was another reason I haven't done a ton of knitting in the meantime. But the weeds did need pulled and now there are other weeds that need pulled. It is a never ending chore. I, oh, I did not realize Libby was still sat next to me and I almost dropped the knitting bag on her. She's just a dark little shadow over here next to my other knitting bag. I need to convince my children that they could pull weeds. Although, as I recall, that weekend I went out and I pulled weeds and they both came out individually to say, I want to help pull weeds or, you know, help you in the garden. And I said, pull these weeds here. And neither of them did it for more than five seconds. So, yeah. New hair. I mean, obviously it's the same old hair, but it looks very different today. Whoosh. Whoosh. New hair is making me happy. I hope you are well. If you made it this far, thank you so much for sitting down and having a cup of tea with me or, you know, sitting down while I have a cup of tea. And I hope you are doing well. If you have any plans for your garden or your knitting plans or rearranging your house plans, I would very much like to hear about it. What have you been up to? What has been keeping you from crafting? What have you been crafting if things have not been keeping you from crafting? We can just work in. Tell me anything. Tell me what you're up to. It's your turn to tell me about yourself. Thank you very much for joining me and have a good rest of your day. Thank you. The candles out. Birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear mom. Happy birthday to you. I helped you, didn't know. I, I did Wait, know. are any of these trick candles? No. Cute. We do have trick candles, but these are not them. Um,